All right, man. Today I'm going to give you an update on my secret tunnel project. So let's go. I made a lot of progress from the previous time. And I also fixed one critical mistake. And I'll let Johnny Peter from the past explain it to you. All right, man. I seriously messed up with the whole um, construction of the vertical shaft. What? Can you hear that? Is that a fighter just flying over my house? Yeah, anyway, anyway, ignore the F-16s flying around. But basically I messed up with the um, construction and what I mean by that is if you look um, at this, at this, um, actually I need to crawl inside the tunnel hole. If you look at um, that part of the wall, notice how it's completely full and there isn't like any um, um, gaps or anything like that. But um, if you look over here, this whole uh, section of the wall is supported by this single um, pillar of bricks. And there is quite a lot of weight on this one single pil pillar. And my worry is that if enough force is applied to this pillar right here, it might buckle outwards and uh, a good portion of this tunnel might actually collapse. Or the whole thing might actually collapse completely. This is a oversight that I did. But how I'm going to fix that mistake is very easy. So there's this doorway pretty much. And I was going to build a tunnel anyway in this direction. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take some bricks. I'm going to take some bricks, right? This is going to be the wall of the tunnel going forwards. And what I did is I took a 6 millimeter, um concrete drill bit and I drilled holes inside the pillar and I'm gonna put these tiny pieces of rebar right here and what these tiny pieces of um, rebar are going to do they're gonna connect this pillar with the wall and hopefully ouch hopefully if this pillar does decide to buckle out those um, pieces of rebar are going to also um, pull along the tunnel wall and hopefully all of that will um, prevent the whole tunnel col uh, from collapsing and yeah so pretty much that's what I'm going to do. So as you can clearly see the concrete has dried out and this wall is looking quite sturdy and I think this should be a good solution to the whole problem and on the other side as you can See right here, I also extended the wall of the tunnel a little, a little bit. Okay, that is the mistake fixed, but what about the actual um, progress of the, the this project? Well, I quickly realized after making the previous video that I um, need some kind of um, like a, a above ground structure that's going to protect the entrance to this um, shaft because originally what I wanted to do is just have like a wooden trap door um, for this uh, entrance of the secret tunnel, but then I realized a wooden door isn't really that strong It wouldn't survive artillery shells and bombing from the uh, Russian Air Force. So what I had decided to do is um, Make like an above-ground section that you'll see um, in just a min minute And basically that like the shed this brick box is going to have uh, a concrete ceiling And if you know anything about a concrete, it's it's really heavy so the underground walls are only one uh, brick layer thick and that's plenty of, of thickness because let's say if you get um, shot with some like uh, rifles or like design designated marksman rifles like the Dragunov like the bullets won't get um, that much speed to actually penetrate the walls because the dirt will be slowing them down but if I don't have any dirt above ground logically then I need the walls to actually be a little bit thicker so I decided to make the walls Two um, bricks stick. Well, I didn't want the bricks just to be sitting on this um, one brick uh, thick wall that I have going underground. So I decided to build uh, a little bit of a foundation. So then I went to work. The first step uh, that I did was I dug a um, little bit of a trench going all across the perimeter of those um, walls right here. And this is for the foundation to be obviously sunken in the ground. You don't want it to be just laying on top of grass. And the uh, the second step actually after I dug that trench was to put a little bit of a, a layer of sand um, below the foundation. And I don't know what this layer is called in English, but in Russian it's called a podsipka. And 
uh, the uh, reasoning why you want to put like a layer of sand bef uh, beneath the foundation is really simple. Um, the dirt, the, the, the clay and everything like that, when it gets moist, it obviously expands. And then um, when it gets dry, it shrinks, the ground shrinks. And you don't want that shrinkage, so this um, layer of sand acts like a buffer. Um, so, it, so it squishes, um, it stretches, and it doesn't let the walls just go up and down when, it's, um, when the weather is either dry or wet. Yeah, then I uh, poured a bunch of buckets of sand for the layer of podsipka and then I did a quick upwards and downwards motion with my little hoe in order to um, compress the sand and I also um, dumped quite a bit of um, water on the sand. If you didn't know, water is the best way how to um, compact any type of soil, clay, dirt, sand, doesn't matter, water does a really good job at that. Then I laid down some bricks on the ground and the same mistake came back to bit me in the ass. The same mistake that happened at this very pillar. The same mistake happened up there. Basically the foundation uh, wasn't connected um, to these walls. There wasn't any type of um, brick overlay. It's just, it was just like one brick next to second brick and in the middle is just mortar. So then uh, I did the same thing as I did for um, this pillar right here. I drilled some holes into the these walls right here. Well, some holes, that's an understatement. I drilled a shit ton of holes. I drilled um, holes into the upper part of these walls. Then I put tiny pieces of rebar everywhere and then I started laying the bricks and that rebar is going to connect the foundation with this um, uh, with these walls and hopefully it will make the whole structure more rigid and more durable. And yeah, after that was um, easy peasy, just layering the bricks on top of each other. Of course, for the concrete uh, mixing, I also used my little hoe. I swear to God, guys, get yourself a little hoe and thank me later. It's going to be so useful at mixing concrete, like it's so perfect. Like a shovel doesn't even do such a great job as a hoe, because you can just rake, rake the concrete towards you, then you go around and you rake it back, and I swear to God, get yourselves a little hoe. You won't regret it. All right, man, we made it outside and just ignore this uh, medieval spinny thing right here. So this is the progress that I've made, as you can clearly see. So um, this is the foundation that I laid. And as you can clearly see, it's just one, two, three, four bricks thick. And I didn't want to go any deeper because a lot of the pressure from the walls is obviously going to go um, on the in internal structure. like on those walls right here because of the way that the bricks are laid as you can clearly see this brick um lays on this wall right here one side of this brick half of it and then the other side lays on the foundation so the depth of the foundations aren't really that important right here well i mean they still need to go a little bit in the ground as you can clearly see this um pit right here this trench but they don't need to go that deep now you can clearly see this um, black material going all the way across in the inside of the walls and that is just basically I'm going to butcher this but it's bitum based waterproofing this this material right here and the reason um, why I'm using it is to um, separate the actual walls of the tunnel and the foundation so that the moisture doesn't um, seep into the walls and ruin, ruin them over time. This whole project simply started as a, um, a tunnel that's going to connect the inside of my, of my garage to the outside. But it's slowly turning from a secret tunnel into a goddamn bunker because look at the thickness of these walls. These walls right here are literally 25 centimeters thick, the standard length of a brick. Almost one foot thick walls. And I also put a little bit of... Um, like a little bit piece pieces of rebar where they're ne where they're necessary, like in the corners. But yes, this is no longer a tunnel. This is almost like a bunker. 
and I might have to rename the next video something like Secret uh, Bunker Part, uh, what is it, 4 now, or, or 5. Not Secret Tunnel, but Secret Bunker, because just look at the thickness right here. To waterproof the foundation even more, what I did um, was I started to plaster the same um, uh, concrete mix that I used for the bricks to lay the bricks. I used the same mixture to um, make these walls nice and flat, as you can clearly see. So these walls are uh, finished already and just for comparison I'm going to show um, this one right here. Look how um, gritty and uneven it is. And I did this so I can um, better, um, how to put it, put liquid tar on them, right? Tar, the same stuff that is used for asphalt. If the walls are uneven, like um, like I showed you on this side right here, then the tar won't really be able to go on all the crooks and nannies. And therefore, there will be left a um, little bit of holes where water can get through. And I don't want any water in this foundation. so. I started to, like I said, plaster the um, the walls, the foundation, and that way the tar has like a um, this very smooth and even surface that it can um, attach to, and there won't be any gaps left for the water to penetrate the foundation. All right, man, I gotta return to building this bunker. Um, laying bricks ain't easy, but somebody has to do it. Well, I hope that you liked the progress that I've made on my secret tunnel. Sorry, sorry, excuse me, on my secret bunker. Anyways, I'm Johnny Peter. Do the impossible, make it happen, and I'll see you next time. Peace.